Good Saturday, March 21, 2020. Just a quick little episode today. I'm wondering how many of you are preparing your meals at home in not electing to do carry out. I started thinking about this and that's why I want to do today's podcast on how to handle things that you're bringing into your home. I just want you to be careful. I think that it's better to be cautious. You don't know how long uh, something could be on a surface. We are told four days on cardboard and up to nine days on other surfaces. So just because not everybody is being tested, we don't know who has it. Uh, Those that are still working, uh, they could inadvertently, you know, get us infected. So it's better just to be careful. If you do go to the grocery store, then go ahead, wipe everything down. I always wipe down my purse. I make sure that I sanitize my buggy when I grab it. They usually have them at the door. And then, of course, I try to wipe everything down before I bring it into the house, including my car. I know it's a lot of work, but I'd just rather be safe than sorry. Even today, I went, uh, or yesterday, I went to... Uh, Best Buy to return something for my nephew, a pair of gaming headsets. And when I brought back the receipt for the credit, I told my nephew to get a little baggie and put the receipt inside of it just to be safe and then sealed it. Because I just didn't want to bring anything into the house that I thought, well, what if something was on it? You have no idea. So Just be aware of the items that are also around you. In addition to keeping your distance, six feet away if you can, making sure that you're wearing rubber gloves when you go out. So not everybody's wearing them, but a lot are. We practice social distancing. When I went to Best Buy, we had to wait outside before we were allowed in the store, then a security guard would allow so many in. I think they only would allow 25 people in the whole entire store. Uh, So uh, in addition to stores reducing their hours, they're taking other measures. And hopefully everybody is being vigilant about sanitizing their environment. My first concern about transmittal of coronavirus caused my red flags to go up when I heard of news that Jack Ma, China's richest man, donated 1 million face masks and 500,000 test kits to the United States. Of course, he's donated to other countries as well. But since this was headed my way, It got me thinking as I was looking at the billionaire's photos in his first Twitter post of his generous shipment leaving Shanghai. Is it safe? I wonder if anybody else was thinking that. A few people commented, no thanks, you've given us enough. Now all the reports about the virus tell us the virus does linger on surfaces, such as cardboard, counters, doorknobs, for at least four to nine days. Now that's assuming that someone has it and sneezes or coughs and touches that surface. But how do we know who has it if they haven't been tested? People are out there working, moving around. Now, the number of people that have it has increased from a couple less than 100 to now, what, I think 13,000 I saw? I, I don't even know. How did he even know how many people have it? 
Then NBC News did a report about accepting home deliveries. And I didn't get to catch the whole thing, but it really answered the question of if you're going to do some kind of takeout, make sure that it's hot. And I was concerned about ordering from Amazon, and he addresses that too about, um, I guess, I don't know if you heard, some of the Amazon workers were complaining of unsanitary work conditions. And so this is what the uh, expert has told us. If you do order online, think twice when you get your deliveries at the door because they might not be safe. Cardboard service, so at least leave it outside for 24 hours if you can. If not, just use maximum precautions once you open it using rubber gloves. Cut that box open, take your goods out, take your gloves off, wash your hands again, and immediately dispose of the box. A lot of people curious about that. Thank you, Joseph. And this also includes tulips from Amsterdam during what's normally a busy spring season. They are being destroyed. Even the bulbs from the Netherlands that were supposed to decorate St. Peter's Square at the Vatican for Easter? The Pope won't be getting his donation of Dutch flowers this year due to border restrictions and lockdowns. Instead, Dutch farmers are giving away tulips to thank health care workers or they're just destroying them. Other flower farmers in Europe and Africa are also being forced to cut and dump huge mounds of flowers, up to 250,000 each day. Some are keeping their tulips in cold storage with the hope that sales will recover by Easter on April 12th. Even this Sunday is Mother's Day in the United Kingdom. Things have not changed. In, sales are still lagging. Otherwise, everything is going to have to be dumped, including bulbs that won't be planted. It's just not economical for the farmers to plant them if they're not going to be able to sell them. One farmer was selling a bunch of 50 flowers for five euro, which is about $5.40. And those of us that go to the store that love flowers, we know that tulips are much more expensive than that because you might get, what, a dozen for four or $5. You can have 50 if you're in the Netherlands for the same price. For the Heart and Home Podcast, I'm Sabah Fakuri.